Oh, hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous, it is August 1st. It is Monday, August 1st. Somehow we have stumbled into August 2022 and uh, Thing. I just remembered at 7 o'clock at night I had forgotten to do a rant so uh, I was gonna talk about uh, this new uh, whatever it is what do they call this thing uh, uh, the uh, anyway the inflation reduction act uh, but who, who wants to hear about some boring thing called the Inflation Reduction Act? I mean, you just walk into a room full of people and say the words Inflation Reduction Act and watch them flee. So uh, anyway, we're going to say goodbye to uh, that. And we're going to get back into some good old Doomer porn and when I first started reading this, I thought it was the very same uh, thing I was talking about yesterday. But I uh, know this is another. Uh, there were, yesterday I was talking about that new book by Bill McGuire. And I thought that this is what it was uh, talking about. But uh, no, this is something entirely different. We have some brand new Doomer porn all over. So... I was going to go with the good old BBC, more studies needed on the possibility of human extinction. And, they, and they, uh, the lead sentence to that story from the BBC today is catastrophic climate change outcomes, including human extinction, are not being taken seriously enough by scientists, a new study says. But I actually like the, uh, there, there's several versions. The good old Associated Press by this fellow named Seth Borenstein. Seth Borenstein, uh, he's actually a pretty good guy. I, I'm actually impressed at that Associated Press, that this little uh, borderline doomer. I would love to have an honest conversation with Seth Borenstein from the Associated Press that this man is probably uh, doing more than any other mainstream media reporter uh, you know, talking about how doomed we are. Uh, I would only like to, what I would love to see, what I would really love to see is the parts of Seth Borenstein's articles that are edited out by his, uh, by his bosses at Associated Press and what Yahoo News. But anyway, Seth does... As good a job, actually does a the AP doing a better job than the BBC covering this story, which they have a team or headline, chances of climate catastrophe are ignored, scientists say. So take it away, Seth Borenstein. Experts are ignoring the worst possible climate change catastrophic scenarios, including the collapse of society and the potential extinction of humans. However unlikely, yes, a group of top scientists claim, 11 scientists from around the world are calling on the United Nations there you go, are calling on the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the world's authoritative climate science organization, to do a special science report on catastrophic climate change to, quote, bring into focus how much is at stake in a worst case scenario, close quote. In their perspective piece in Monday's Proceedings of the Na National Academy of Sciences, 
they raise the idea of human extinction and worldwide societal collapse in the third sentence of their report, calling it, quote, a dangerously underexplored topic. I have been exploring the topic of human extinction and worldwide societal collapse, well, in various forms for 14 years, but here on the, here on Collapse Chronicles, uh, that, that's what we have been uh, exploring for how many years now? Okay, just to be sure, guys, just to be sure, and you better believe that this was Seth Borenstein did not write this this way. This was an editor overriding Seth Borenstein's original manuscript. Okay, you got to understand, I know it's hard to believe, I was a, I have been both a news reporter and a news editor, and I know when I am seeing an editor's override of the, uh, I would be shocked if this is the way Seth wrote this. Anyway, the scientists said they are not saying that the worst is going to happen. They say the trouble is no one knows how likely or unlikely a, quote, climate endgame is, and the world needs those calculations to battle global warming. All right, this is study lead author Luke Kemp for the Center for the Study of Existential Risk at the University of Cambridge in England. I never interviewed Luke, but I did interview several people from this uh, Center for the Study of Existential Risk at the University of Cambridge. Anyway, quote, I think it is highly unlikely you are going to see, this, you know, sounding like Book Hermit, anything close, anything close to extinction over the next century simply because humans are incredibly resilient. Even if we have a 1% chance of having a global catastrophe going extinct over the coming century, that 1%, that 1% chance that humans are going to be extinct by the end of this century, that is way too high, close quote. Well, of course, some of us would say that is way too low. Okay. Catastrophic climate scenarios, quote, appear like... Ah, Sancho! Ah, come here. No, you're not going to do it. Nope, you don't need to go. I'm never asking anything. Catastrophic climate scenarios, quote, appear likely enough to warrant attention. Yes, and can lead to prevention and warning systems. Like we don't have enough warning systems going on. No, you just look right over there. Good risk analyses Good risk analyses consider both what is most likely and what is the worst that could happen, study authors said. But because of pushback from non-scientists who reject climate change, mainstream climate science has concentrated on looking at what is most likely and also disproportionately on low temperature warming scenarios that come close to international goals, said co-author Tim Lenton, director of the Global Systems Institute, blah, blah, blah. According to Lenton, there is, quote, not enough emphasis on how things 
the risks, the big risks, could go plausibly badly wrong, close quote. It's like an airplane, Lenton said. It's overwhelmingly likely that it will land safely. But that's only because so much attention was made to calculate the worst case scenario and then figure out how to avoid a crash. It only works if you research what could go badly wrong, and that is not being done enough with climate change, he said. This is, I love this guy's name, Jonathan Overpeck. John, Jonathan Overpeck, uh, the University of Michigan environmental dean who was not part of the study, quote, the stakes may be higher than we thought. Huh. Close quote, yes. Overpeck worries that the world, quote, may stumble. Yes, may stumble upon climate risks it does not know about. Hmm. When global science organizations, whatever that means, when global science organizations look at climate change, they tend to just look at what happens what happens in the world, extreme weather, higher temperatures, melting ice sheets, rising sheets, and plant and animal extinctions. But they are not factoring enough how these reverberate in human societies and interact with existing problems like war, hunger, and disease, study authors said. Okay. This is Christy Eby uh, from the University of, Was uh, University of Washington climate professor Christy Eby, a co-author, quote, If we don't look at the interacting risks, we will be painfully surprised. Well, some of you will. It was a mistake health professionals made before the corona panic. Yes. Uh, when assessing pandemics, they talked about disease spread, but they did not talk about lockdowns, supply chain problems, and spiraling economies. Wow. Do we? I'm not going to get off on a corona panic rant. Huh? Who was say? Uh, anyway, we're going to move on. All right. <clears throat> Study authors said they worry about societal collapse. All right. Societal collapse here in the Associated Press. Study authors said they worry about societal collapse war, famine, economic crises linked to climate change more than the physical changes to Earth itself. So this study, with all of their technical jargon, gobbledygook, is looking more at the societal collapse uh, knock-on effects from all of this shit than the actual uh, damage to the planet. Well, I guess they left that up to other people. Outside climate scientists, you know, those not uh, actually involved in the new uh, study, outside climate scientists and risk experts were both welcoming and wary of focusing on the worst of the worst, as many reject as many reject climate doom talk. Yes, climate doom talk. Oh shit, I should have put on my other uh, hat. Oh yes, this is uh, our Alert Tries member. Kirk has made me a fine t-shirt and a new hat. He also has a hat that says doom happens. Yes, we cannot have climate doom talk. 
we talked about that yesterday. Okay. This is Andrew Weaver, a University of Victoria climate scientist, yes, and a former legislator for the Green Party. Quote, Huh? Well, huh, this is actually kind of surprising. I thought that he was, anyway, good for you, dude. Uh, I, I thought this was a typo. I'm, 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 I'm hoping that Andrew Weaver, that this is not a typo. Quote, quoting Andrew Weaver from the University of Victoria climate scientist, quote, I do not believe civilization as we know it will make it out of this century. Resilient humans will survive, but our societies that are that have urbanized and us and are supported by rural agriculture will not. So maybe we have found the uh, the real identity of Book Hermit. Maybe Book Hermit is University of Victoria climate scientist Andrew Weaver. Book Hermit, you have been exposed. Yes. All right, but now we have climate scientist Zeke Housefather. Yes, I right, you know that Zeke had to weigh in on this. Climate scientist Zeke Housefather of the tech company Stripe and Berkeley Earth, whatever that means, has criticized climate scientists in the past for using future scenarios of greatly increasing carbon pollution when the world is no longer on those paths to more rapid warming. Yet, even he, even Zeke Housefather, okay, one of the biggest, you know, hopium-soaked, apocalyptimist of them all, even Zeke Housefather, said it does make sense to look at catastrophic scenarios, quote, as long as we are careful not to conflate, not to conflate the worst case scenario with the most likely outcome, close quote. So, okay, how, my, how many times have, has it now that the, uh, you know, now that the real-time climate data coming in over the past 20 or 30 years, over and over and over and over again, now that we have the real-time historical data in 2022, looking back 20 or 30 years to all of these climate models, the, the worst case scenarios did not explain, did not uh, fathom how bad things have gotten as quickly as they have, uh, as they have, as they have gotten. The worst case scenarios have been left in the dirt. It is a hell of a lot worse, a hell of a lot quicker than we thought, as uh, Bill McGuire was, was, you know, talks about in his new book, Hothouse Earth. So, okay, so for the last 20 or 30 years, every one of these goddamn uh, worst case scenarios is coming out to be true, or even worse than the worst, so why should there be any reason to believe that over the next 20 to 30 years that the same pattern is not going to continue and if anything we are on uh, you know what what is it instead of an arithmetic uh, rise we you know what do they call it a geometric rise or a whatever the fucking mathematical terms we're, we're going through the the ceiling here there is no reason to believe uh, that the worst case scenarios are, are not what's going to unfold in the next 20 to 30 years. The worst case scenarios are the most likely outcome if the, uh, if the real time data over the past 20 or 30 years is any evidence. All right, but talking about the extinction of humans Yes. Oh, yes. This is Brown University climate scientist K. 
Kim Cobb telling you that uh, I, that talking about the extinction of humans is not is not a very effective <laughs> communications device. Do you, do you think so? Yes. People tend to immediately say, well, that's just, you know, arm waving or doomsday mongering. Yes, close quote. What is happening short of human extinction is bad enough, she said. You know, this is a point I've been making. Like, why the hell do you, yeah, you know, it's like without even bringing human, ex anyway. Uh, all right, getting to the end of this. Co-author Tim Linton said researching worst-case scenarios could find nothing to worry about. There you go. Okay, let's just dig a little deeper in this well. Let's just dig a little deeper in this well, and maybe when we get through all of this muck and mire, we will find nothing to worry about at the bottom of your dried-up well. Yes. Quote, maybe, maybe it's that you can thoroughly rule out a number of these bad scenarios. Well, that's actually really well worth spending your time doing that. Then we should all cheer up. We should all cheer up a bit. Yes. <laughs> uh, are you cheering up a bit, Sancho Banza? Anyway, guys. Yes. Sancho Banza is cheered up. Are you cheered up a bit that we're not going extinct? Someone, there will be a human around to keep feeding you your Walmart chicken. Where would you be without humans on the planet? You would not have any Walmart chicken to eat. So, there's no human extinction. I don't want to hear about your worst case scenarios. It is a gorgeous evening in August. And the flowers are blooming. Ah, and I'm going to get out there and enjoy this beautiful evening uh, in August while I still can. And get up tomorrow and go dig some more slop out of my dried up pond. Yes, do you want to go dig out some slop? You just want to go get chippies. I think the chippies have gone to bed like that. Bye, guys.